एवरीवन इन दिस वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस लिटरेरी टर्म स्टार्टिंग विद लेटर सी द फर्स्ट लिटरेरी टर्म इज कैन एन ऑफ लिटरेचर द ग्रीक वर्ड कैन एन सिग्निफाई अ मेजरिंग रोड और अ रूल वॉज एक्सटेंडेड टू डी नॉट अ लिस्ट ऑफ कैटालॉग देन केम टू बी अप्लाइड टू द लिस्ट ऑफ बुक्स इन द हब्रू बाइबल एंड द न्यू टेस्टमेंट which were designated by church authorities as the genuine holy scriptures a number of writings related to those in the scriptures but not admitted into the authoritative canon are called apocrypha 11 books which have been included in the roman catholic bible canon are considered apocryphal by protestant the term canon was later used in literary application to signify the list of secular work accepted by experts as genuinely written by a particular author uh, we speak thus of the chaucer canon and the shakespeare canon and refer to other works that have some time been attributed to an author but on evidence that may editors judge to be inadequate or invalid the use of term canon with reference both to the bible and to secular writings obscure important differences in the two applications the biblical canon has been established by the church authorities vested with the power to make uh, such a decision is enforced by authorities with the power to impose religious sanctions is explicit in the books that is listed and is closed permitting neither deletion nor addition the perfect example is companion of the bible which was published in 1993 and on the other hand the canon of literature is the product of wavering and unofficial consensus it is a tact rather than explicit the pro, uh, laws in its boundaries and always subject to changes in its evolution so the canon of the literature is the product of a wavering and unofficial consequences it is a tacit rather than explicit laws in its boundaries and always subject to change in its inclusions the social process by which an author or a literary work comes to be a uh, recognized as canonical has come to be called canon formation the next literary term is carpe diem its meaning is seize the day it is a latin phrase from the horax odes which has become the name for a very common literary motif especially in lyric poetry the speaker in a carp dame poem emphasizes that life is short and time is fleeting in order to urge his auditor who is often represented as a virgin reluctant to change her condition to make the most of present pleasures a frequent emblem of the brevity of physical beauty and the finality of death is the rose as in edmund spenser's the fairy queen the more complex poem of this type communicate the sadness or desperation of pleasures under the sentence of inevitable death for example andrew marvels to coy his mistress the next literary term is celtic revival it is also known as the irish literary renaissance it identify the remarkably creative period in irish literature from about 1880 to the death of william butler eats in 1939 the aim of eats and other early leaders of the movement was to create a distinctively national literature 
by going back to the Irish history, legend and folklore as well as to native literary models. The major writers however wrote not in the native Irish but in English also and under the influence of various non-Irish literary forms a number of them also turned increasingly for their subject matter to modern Irish life rather than to the ancient past. It has some character and characterization. The character is the name of a literary genre. It is a short and usually witty sketch in prose of a distinctive type of person. The genre was inaugurated by Theodorus, a Greek author of the 2nd century who wrote a lively book entitled Characters. The form had a great vogue in the early 17th century and the books of characters then written by Joseph Hall. Characters are the persons represented in a dramatic or narrative work who are interpreted by the reader as being endowed with a particular moral, intellectual and emotional qualities by reference from what the person say and their distinctive ways of saying the dialogues and what they do are the actions. The next literary term is Svalkic romance or medieval romance is a type of narrative that developed in 12th century in France and after that spread to the literature of the other countries and displaced the earlier epic and heroic forms. Romance originally signified a work written in the French language which evolved from a dialect of a Roman language which is Latin. Romance were at first written in verse but later in prose as well as the romance is distinguished from the epic in that it does not represent a heroic age of tribal wars but a courtly and cavalcic age often one of highly developed manners and civility. Its standard plot is that of a quest undertaken by a single knight in order to gain a lady's favor. And the recurrent materials of medieval severic romance have been divided by the scholar into four classes of subject. First is the matter of Britain, second the matter of Rome, third the matter of France and the fourth the matter of England. The next literary term is chorus. Among the ancient Greeks, the chorus was a group of people wearing masks who sang or chanted verses while performing dance-like maneuvers at religious festivals. A similar chorus played a part in Greek tragedies where they served mainly as commentators on the dramatic actions and events who expressed traditional moral, religious and social attitude beginning with Euripides. However, the chorus assumed primarily a lyrical function. The Greek ode as developed by Pindar was also chanted by Chorus. The next literary term is Chronicles. Chronicles are the procedures of modern histories were written account in prose or words of national or worldwide events over a considerable period of time. If the chronicles deal with events year by year, they are often called annals. Unlike the modern historian, most chronicles tended to take their information as they found it making little attempt to separate fact from legend. The most important English chrono chronicles are the Anglo-Saxon chronicle. The next literary term is Clyde, which is French for the stereotype used in printing signifying an expression that deviates enough from ordinary usage to call attention 
to itself and has been used so often that it is felt to be hackeyed or cloying the next literary term is chronicle plays were dramatic verse based on the historical materials in the english chronicle by ralph hollist and others they achieved high popularity late in the 16th century when the patriotic fervor following the defeat of the spanish armada in 1588 the early chronological plays are presented a loosely knit series of events during the reign of an english king and dependent of for affect mainly on a bustle of stage battles spectacle christopher marlowe however in his edward 2 selected and rearranged materials from hollish chrono- chronicles to compose a unified drama of character and shape the next next literary term is comedy in the most of common literary application a comedy is a fictional work in which the material are selected and managed primarily in order to interest and amuse us the characters and their discomfortures engage our pleasurable attention rather than our profound concern we are made to feel confident that no great disaster will occur and usually the actions turn out confident that no great disaster will occur and the usually the action turns out happily for the chief character the term comedy is customarily applied only to plays for the stage or to motion pictures it should be noted however that the comic form so defined also occur in prose fiction and narrative poetry it has a broad spectrum of dramatic uh, comedy the first is romantic comedy was developed by elizabethan dramatists on the model of contemporary prose romance such as thomas lodge uh, the source of shakespeare as you like it which was published in 1599 such comedy rep- uh, represents a love affair that involves a beautiful and engaging heroine the next is the tyric comedy it is a it ridicules political policies or philosophical doctrines or else attacks deviation from the social order by making ridiculous the violators of its standard of morals or manners the next is the comedy of manners it originated in the new comedy of greek and was developed by the roman dramatists plato and terres this play dealt with the wickedness of young lovers and including what became the stock character of much later comedy such as the El- clever servant old and stogy parents and the wealthy rival the english comedy of manners was early exemplified by shakespeare's loves labors lost and much ado about nothing and was given a high polish in restoration comedy the restoration form owes much to be a brilliant drama of the french writer moliere it deals with the rep- uh, relations and intrigues of men and women living in a sophistic upper class society and uh, release for comic effect in a large part on a wit and a sparkle of the dialogue often in the form of repeating a witty conversational give and take which constitute a kind of verbal fencing match and to a lesser degree on the violation of social standards and decorum by would be wits jealous husband convincing rival and popish dandies for example william congreve's the way of the world and william wachery the country wife the next type of comedy is a farce it is a type of comedy designed to provoke the audience 
to simple hearty laughter belly laughs in the parlance of the theater to do so it commonly employs highly exaggerated or khaki kechur type of characters put them into improbable and ludicrous situation and makes free use of sexual mix up broad verbal humor and the physical bustle and horse play it was a component in the comic episode in medieval miracle plays for example the merry wives of windsor the plays of french playwright george fidu other example is oxford wilde's the importance of being earnest a distinction is often made between high and low comedy so high comedy is also described by george merit in classic essay the idea of comedy they are low comedy which uh, has little or no intellectual appeal but undertake to arouse laughter by jokes they are comedy of humor tragic comedy where wit humor and the comic on comedy and its varieties were uh, found in masters of dramatic comedy which was published in 1939 the next is comedy of humors it is a type of comedy developed by ben johnson the elizabethan playwright based on the ancient psychological theory of four humor that was still current in johnson's time the humors were held to be the four primary fluids blood phlegm choler or yellow bile or melancholy or black bile whose temperament or mixture was held to determine both a person's physical condition and character type an imbalance of one or another humor in a temperament was said to produce four kinds of disposition whose names have survived the underlying theory the next literary term is comic relief it is the introduction of comic characters speeches scenes in a series of tragic work especially in dramas next is comedial del art was a form of comic drama developed about the middle 16th century by guilds of professional italian actors in which the main character and the general chorus of the action in a typical play a pair of young lovers outwit a rich old father uh, and uh, aided by a clever and interviewing servant the next is conceit originally meaning a conceit or image a conceit came to be the term for figure or speech which establish a striking parallel usually ingeniously elaborate between two very dissimilar things or situation english poets of the 16th and 17th century adapted the term from the italian conceito there are two types of conceit the first is the petrarchan conceit it is a type of figure used to love poem that had been novel and effective in the italian poet petrarch but became hacked in some of his imitators among the elizabethan sonators the figure consists of detail ingenious and often exaggerated comparison applied to the disdainful mistress as cold and cruel and she is beautiful and to the distress and despair of her worshipful lover the and the next type of conceit is the metaphysical conceit it is a characteristic figure in john donne and other metaphysical poets of the 17th century it was described by samuel johnson the metaphysical poets exploited all knowledge common place or esoteric practical theological or philosophical true or fabulous 
for the vehicle of this figure and their comparison whether succeed or expanded were often novel and witty and at their best startlingly effective in sharp contrast to both the concept and figure of conventional patriarchism is john dunn's the flea a poem that uses a flea who has bitten both lovers as a basic reference for its argument against the lady's resistance to an importune man the metaphysical conceit fell out of favor in the 18th century when it came to be regarded as strained and unnatural the next literary term is concrete and abstract in standard philosophical usage a concrete term is a word that denotes a particular person or physical object and an abstract term denotes either a class of things or a else qualities that exist only as attributes of particular person or things the next literary term is concrete poetry is a recent term for an ancient poetic type called patron poem that experiment with the visual shape in which a text is presented on the page some greek poets beginning in the 3rd century shaped a text in the form of the object that the poem describe or suggest in the renaissance and 17th century a number of poets composed such patron form in which the lines vary in length in such a way that their printed shape outlines the subject of the poem uh, the best example is easter wings and the altar the next literary term is confessional poetry it designate a type of narrative and lyric verse given in pieces by robert lowell's life studies which deals with the fact and the intimate mental and physical exper- experience of the poet's own life confessional poetry was written in rebellion against the demand for impersonality by t s eliot and other new critic the next literary term is confident it is a character in a drama or a novel who plays only a minor role in the action but serves the protagonist as a trusted friend to whom he or she confess intimate thoughts problems and feelings the next literary term is connotation and denotation in a wide spread usage the denotation of a word is its primary signification or reference its connotation is the range of secondary or associated significance and feeling which it commonly suggests or implies the next literary term is convention in one sense the term convention are necessary or at least convenient devices accepted by the tacit agreement between author and audience for solving the problem and representing reality that has posed by a particular artistic medium and in second sense the term convention are conspicuous features of subject matter form or technique that occur recurrent types of characters turns of plot forms of verification or kind of diction and style the most inclusive sense common in structuralist criticism all literary works no matter how seemingly realistic are held to be entirely constituted by literary convention or codes of genre plot character language and so on which a reader naturalizes by assimilating these convention to the world of discourse and experience 
that in the reader's time and place are regarded as real or natural the same term is invention was originally a term used in theories of rhetoric and later in literary criticism to signify the finding of the subject matter by an orator or a poet it then came to signify innovative element in a work in contrast to the deliberate imitation of the form and subject of prior literary models there is nothing either good or bad in the extent or obviousness of conformity to pre-existing convention all depends on the effectiveness of the use and individual writer makes of them the next literary term is courtly love a doctrine of love together with an elaborate code governing the relation between aristocratic lovers which was widely represented in the lyric poem of western europe during the middle ages the development of the convention of courtly love is usually attributed to the shobeders in the period from the later 11th century through the 12th century in the conventional doctrine love between the sexes with its erotic and physical aspects spiritualized is regarded as the noblest passion this side of heaven the courtly lover idealizes and idealizes his beloved and subject himself to her every within the next literary term is criticism or more specially literary criticism it is the overall term for studies concerned with the defining classifying analyzing interpreting and evaluating works of literature theoretical criticism proposes an explicit theory of literature in the sense of general principles together with a set of terms distinctions and categories to be applied to identify and analyzing works of literature as well as the criteria since the 1970s there has been a large number of writings continental american and english proposing diverse novel and radical forms of critical theory these are listed and dated in the entry theories of literature or current each theory in that list is also given a separate entry in this glossary uh, practical criticism or applied criticism concerns itself with the discussion of particular works and writers in an applied critic the theoretical principle controlling the mode of the analysis interpretation and evaluation are often left implicit or put in only as occasion demands next is the impressionistic criticism it attempts to represent in words the felt qualities of a particular passage of work and to express the response that the work directly evokes from the critic as william hazlitt put it in his essay on genius and common sense the next is judicial criticism it attempts not merely to communicate but to analyze and explain the effect of a work by reference to its subject organization techniques and style and to base the critic's individual judgment on specified criteria of literary excellence uh next is mimetic criticism views the literary work as an imitation or reflection or representation of the world and human life and the primary criteria applied to a work is the truth of its representation to the subject matter that it represent or should represent
Next is pragmatic criticism. These are the views, the work as something which is constructed in order to achieve certain effects on the audience and its tend to judge the value of the work according to its success in achieving that aim. The next is expressive criticism. It treats a literary work primarily in relation to its author. It defines poetry as an expression or, or overflow or utterance of feelings or as the product of the poet imagination operating on his or her perception, thoughts and feeling. It tends to judge the work by its sincerity or its adequacy to the poet's individual vision or state of mind and it often seeks in the work evidence of the particular temperament and experience of the author who consciously or unconsciously has revealed himself or herself in it. The next is objective criticism. It deals with the work of literature as something which stand free from what is often called extrinsic relation to the poet or to the audience or to the unvarying world. Instead, it describes the literary product as a self-sufficient and autonomous object or else as a world in itself which is to be contemplated at its own end and to be analyzed and judged solely by interesting criteria such as its complexity, coherence, equilibrium, integrity and the interrelation of its component elements. The next literary term is cultural studies. It designates a recent and rapidly growing cross-disciplinary enterprising for analyzing the condition that affect the production, reception and cultural significance of all types of institutions, practices and products. Among these, literature is accounted as a merely one of many forms of cultural signifying practices. A chief concern is to specify the functioning of the social, economy and political forces and power structures that produce all forms of cultural phenomena and endue them with their social meanings, their truth, the modes of discourse in which they are discussed and their relative value and status. So that's all for today's session. Thank you so much for listening so carefully.